Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match today, or not today, <laughs> this is the second match of the day. It's going to be between Lowry and Veilthos on Obsidian. So, bit of background, Lowry is basically, I think, about the fourth best player in Zero K right now, somewhere in that area. He's, he's, it's a bit of a tight arena around that range, but he is definitely one of the better players. Veilthos, on the other hand, I've shown a few of his games before, but I haven't seen him in any tournament so far. I actually did double check. This doesn't appear to be an alternate name for anybody, or at least anybody well known. This is his name. So, see what he does here. We're on Obsidian, which is a map that I don't believe I've showcased before. Let's go over it briefly. The players are setting up. By the way, Feltos going for shield bots, getting a, just one band for scouting, while Lowry going for cloaky bots has not gone for scouting at all, confident in the size of the map. So yeah, this map is a relatively large map. It is the actual dimensions on this one. This map here is a 14 by 14 map, which is medium to large-ish, especially for 1v1. As you can see with the metal extractors, there's metal pretty well spread out across the map. A couple really big focal points along the southeast and northwest, where there's 2.5 metal per spot rather than just the normal 2, or 2.3 metal rather. Actually, no, everything's 2.3. So this map's a fairly generous per metal spot. Mostly maps will go for two per metal spot, but this is 2.3. Slight improvement. It does mean that basically you need like, I think five metal extractors will, no, sorry. Three metal extractors will do the same job of four, no, whatever. Like seven will do the same job of eight, basically. However, the, ba the initial battles getting joined up here. Failthos is, you know, basically caught Lowry off guard there. Bit of a scouting glaive, but more bandits are feeding to the center. Anyway, this map, due to its size, does allow for a bit more defensive posture at the start. It, allows, it does, however, because of the hills, allow for a lot of moves down the hills. You can just go you can go down the hill here, or down the hill here, cross all this. This is all bot pathable, and it's actually a really good place to also set up fights. If you go up from here, we might see these players do it right now. Hard to tell, though, and actually, why is... I apologize, apparently... My outlines have gone away. You know, it's difficult to see if you don't know what their outlines are. There we go. What the? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Okay, well, that's unfortunate. So I apologize for the visibility issues that are in inevitably going to come up. But anyway. So, Glaze, you're going along the ridge here. I was about to say, units can go up this mountain and get massive, just do the terrain, get a lot of bonus from it. Zero K doesn't have the biggest high ground advantage, but it, retreating is a big advantage. And when you're going uphill, you do get the fact that you're kind of retreating along three dimensions. So you can dodge shots that are aimed for where you were, but aren't going to hit you like, on flat ground. They'd hit you because you're just further behind, but in the projectile. But going above, they'll hit the mountain. Like, they'll miss that way. And it looks like Lowry is checking out what's going on here, going to figure out what's. Well, whether or not the Feldhaus is expanding to this east side of the map, because Lowry's expanding to the west side of the map. Lowry does have his economy nicely laid out. Seriously, I'm, what is going on with this outline thing? I apologize, I, I realize I'm obsessing a bit. Okay, well that's a technical issue I'll have to fix later. Anyway, Feldhaus coming in here with a bandit. Lowry was trying to flank this line, but didn't seem to quite work out. Feldhaus managed to catch it in time. Just to double check, Feldhaus does not actually have radar over here. That was just a good read, that was a good game sense. But he didn't actually have radar. I think he might have spotted the glaive right at the edge of his radar, though. Lowry, on the other hand, has radar only in the center valley. So Felthos is a bit of a better position for radar. Felthos' radar nice, nicely placed on this cliff. I do like to see that. Lowry, once again, setting up another glaive line. Not for defense, just to see what's going on. These glaives are, too sp are spaced way too far apart. There aren't enough of them to actually deal with what might come down. Felthos... Splitting up some of his bandits just to scout out where Lowry has set himself up. Lowry as well harassing along the west side of the map. That glaive has a bit of a chance actually hiding behind the convict, but not long enough that defender gets the better of the glaive. The convict no longer acting as defense. Nice clever move there by Lowry though. It's very important to bear in mind, of course, the whole physics system of 0k and any spring game really is that units can block other units. Buildings can block units. Stuff block stuff. So bear that in mind when it comes to targeting. Your units cannot fire through each other, and they won't try. They would just hit each other if they did. It happens sometimes, especially with ducks. Like, ducks have a tendency to kill each other. 
I imagine it might be to encourage the others, but frankly, I think it's just vain. Anyway, Lowry is going to try for another flank. Lowry is really liking these flanks. I don't know if Failthos... Failthos doesn't seem to be getting wise to this. He's continuing to line his units up in straight lines, not going for curves or anything like that. He's going in just straight lines, not going for a curve or not going for an encirclement or anything like that. Just going for straight lines, which can be flanked easily, and Lowry building up his glaives, not letting a lot of them die. This is wise. He has unfortunately lost some of them to the bandits here, and Failthos, this bandit raid could be problematic, but at the same time, Lowry's coming in with his own glaives, losing a fair few. Needs to get him out of the way. Glaives do auto regen health, which means that. This attack, slight, actually, really overall, is, it's good for Failthos. Lowry threw away a ton of glaives. That was not necessary. That really wasn't necessary. But Failthos continuing to keep his bandits in a nice line. He does have these bandits over to the south, and they are going for a nice raid. Gonna be able to get rid of one metal extractor. Lowry has a 33 metal income compared to Failthos' 26, but if Failthos continues like this, they could can actually be fairly powerful. See how it works out, though. He is coming to the side, and Lowry knows that these bandits are coming. He is sending some glaives in. In the wrong direction, however, they are... They are missing it. The, the bandits are already out of the gate. They're going around the side, going around the back, and... Lowry has no defenses around the back of his base. He has a stiletto. He has an air... He's gone for an air switch. Failthos, on the other hand, has not gone for a factory switch whatsoever. And his bandits are coming along... They are coming around that mountain, and they have no resistance. At the side, or they will soon. The Lotus is being built up, but this bandit... These bandits need to go straight in. That Lotus is the only thing that's going to stand in the way, and they have 20-second window to get into it. And they are now going... One of the bandits is going in. It auto-fired. Felthos is not paying attention to this right now. He is... He is paying attention more to the north side of the map. He's paying attention to his base. He's not paying attention to this attack down here. And that is a problem. That Lotus is... Possibly going to get up. These bandits are... They have terrain advantage. They have the advantage of spacing. And unfortunately, they do not have a whole lot of damage. They might be able to get rid of this air factory in time. If he gets rid of the air factory, that will be a huge blow. The Stellar is not even done. The Lotus, however, is done. Or one of the Lotuses is done. And these bandits, not unfortunately micromanaged as well as they could have been. Failthos, very good planning. But Lowry had better response to that. At the same time, though, Lowry attacking to the northeast. And Failthos just had enough units to block that off keeping it safe, and continuing to build up a ton of bandits. On this map, not a surprise. Larger maps like this tend to favor a lot of raiders. Slightly smaller maps tend to favor a mix of raider, riot, and skirmisher, but a map like this is going to be raider until you get the air switch. Failthos is just now going for the air switch. Lowry has a stiletto. He's going to be getting shadows pretty soon. Getting three shadows, so he's going for a calm snipe. Like, three shadows, that will kill a commander. Which, incidentally, for, La for Failthos is... Right here. It is, in fact, a battle... Or it's not a battle comm. It is a strike commander. I haven't seen those in a while. Strike commander. Well, the It's kind of middling as far as toughness goes, but at level 2, it will survive a good... It survives 5 shadows. So the 6th shadow will kill, but the first 5 won't. And the stiletto here, that's going to be the ace in the hole against these bandits. Failthos does have an army advantage. He does have more bandits than Lowry has glaives. And bandits are advantageous against Glaives to begin with. So, Lowry definitely on top here, but he's gonna... Sorry, failed us on top, but these sh these stilettos, that's what's gonna change it, and Lowry comes in with the Glaives, falling up in the stiletto, half the bandits are disabled, all the static defenses are disabled, the Glaives can just plow through this, tearing everything apart. No resistance whatsoever. The bandits have three seconds before they're, they're fully armed again, and... they are now armed, but Lowry has done the damage he needed to do, keeping failed us down, and at the same time, Failthos did attack around, did harass this metal extractor, but unfortunately, losing some of his bandits on a counterattack. Nice bait there by Lowry for Failthos's bandits. Failthos, he is at a major disadvantage here. Lowry is reclaiming somewhere. Got it. No, he's not reclaiming. Never mind. He's not reclaiming at all. He's just got overdrive. And that overdrive is. That's helping out quite a bit. At this point, Lowry does nearly have double the income of Failthos. And has now an army advantage, especially now that he has shadows. He has Avengers as well for air control, just in case. But the shadows are going to be the real weapon he's going to use. Like I said, though, he needs about six of them. Avengers are up as well for Failthos. So Failthos can defend against the shadows decently well. But that stiletto, that's going to be the bigger problem for these bandits. We saw already how much damage that can be dealt. 
with a stiletto combined with a bunch of glaives coming in afterwards. That's going to happen again. I guarantee it. That is going to happen again. There's no reason why we are not going to see Lowry just plow through that. He's got stilettos right now, by the way. Once he has... Wait, where is that other stiletto? Yeah, there's a stiletto being built. Another stiletto is already in play, and he is just going to be ripping this army to shreds. Failthos needs to get rid of these stilettos before they deal the damage they're going to deal. Getting felons as well, I... I don't agree with this choice. Stiletto's pretty much hard counter felons. And... I'd say what he needs right now is... Hmm. What do you need? The Avengers are good. The... The thing is, he is fighting a Recon Calm. And a Recon Calm really only takes three hits from Shadows. So he'd only have to build three Shadows and he'd win from... Well, not win, but he'd take, deal Lowry a lot of damage from there. Lowry going for E-Cell, by the way. That, at this point, not a big deal. He has enough energy for it to not matter. And Stiletto coming in. Double Stiletto Strike. This is what I meant. One of the Stilettos does go down. The other Stiletto taking some damage and going down as well. But the damage has already been dealt. There's a five-second window for the Glaives to deal with this. And the Glaives are going from a flank as well, in addition to the Disarm. Taking out half a dozen... Half a dozen of these bandits for free. And the Felon is dealing a good amount of damage, though. It is getting rid of the Glaives without too much issue. There are going to be more Stilettos coming... Are, are there? No, it looks like shadows are the way that Lowry is going. However, Lowry is going to be able to tear apart a lot of this. Or, yeah, he's going to tear apart this entire expansion. Losing a lot of glaives in the process, though. Giving Failthos some more resources to work with, but still getting rid of this expansion. Getting rid of... Actually, he's losing a lot to these static defense. He should get out of there. However, he doesn't have... Yeah, this is all that Failthos has invested in the north. Lowry took the northwest, so there's a lot there that's really not going to be going in Felthos' favor right now. On the other hand, Felthos does have felons, and Lowry does not have... He doesn't have snipers for them. He doesn't... He has some shadows, which are going to help a bit, but snipers are really the way to go. The only downside of the felon is the speed. Like I said before, raiders are big on these maps because of speed. If the felon managed to plow through the main side of the map, it could deal a fair amount of damage. Though it's not linked up right now, it needs to link up. You need to have felon balls. You need to have felons with thugs and possibly convicts all working together. Convicts are actually not a terrible idea because of the fact that they can repair, but they do have a fairly low shield recharge rate. So it's a tricky trade-off. However, Feldos is going for a bit of a counter-attack, trying to get rid of these metallic charges that have been here since the start of the game. I don't think Feldos is aware of this north side, and he's certainly... Just now become aware of these glaives coming in from the north. Felthos does not have any defenses, by the way. Basically no defenses. Not for half a dozen glaives. This defender will not do the trick. Now, Felthos... He's actually going to get hit by some shadows. His banner's going to get hit by the shadows. His commander... Well, like I said, his commander really is not vulnerable to these shadows. Not that vulnerable, at least. Not until there are about six of them. And... Stiletto is incoming. There are more. There are three shadows in play. One stiletto. Spider switch. And here's the sniper. I was waiting for this. This is the counter to the felon. This hits it hard enough to basically be a massive thorn in its side. Not let it get anywhere. But the shadows have been exposed way too soon. And nice use of a phoenix as well in the north. The... The Northwest expansion of Lowry being exposed. Felthos is taking that out with no resistance. These Glaives are going to come around to try to help, but the Felon will just tear him to shreds. Lowry, once again, has control of the Northwest, but hasn't built up anything yet. These Rectors are in place to do so. The east side of the map is getting harassed by a bunch of Glaives. Lowry coming in and losing all of his Glaives to Lotuses without dealing any damage. No damage at all. Lowry has been throwing away a lot of armor. His... He has a massive army to throw away, but he has been throwing it away. And defending the center valley as well, I think... At this point, Felthos, his best bet is to come around the side. It's a bit tricky, though. Hard to do. He did lose a Felon just now to Shadows. This is what I mean by Felon Ball. You just make sure that your Felons are with your Thugs, because the Thugs and Felons together... They just really benefit each other, especially by the Shields. But at this point, that is not going to work out. And these Glaives have free reign over the area. The Felon is dead. The second Felon is over to the north... Not in, actually, the second two felons over to the north, not in place to do anything. A bunch of thugs to the south, and another felon coming in. So mass felon is where Feldhaus is going, and I think he could push through the center with this. If he breaks through the center, that will leave Lowry fairly vulnerable, but I think 
Ultimately, a flank is the best thing he can do. Lowry is not defending his flanks very well. These Rectors going down, all of them going down from the looks of it. And, I don't know, one of them going down, the rest of the other five just going past. But one of them that was building the metal structure going down, and more flanking, but Lowry is well aware of this. He's gonna have, he has defenses set up in his main base. He has everything set up to deal with this, and that's really not gonna do him any favors. The thugs also going into the Glaives, because thugs do not beat Glaives. By any stretch. The only hope the thugs have to beat Glaze is that there's a felon next to them leeching off their shields. That's it. That's it and nothing else. But this pair of felons, it's, like, it's a matter of time for the pair of felons to get down there. That's the thing. They still need to be near the thugs for it to work. But if those felons, that's not a bad flank. Those felons will be able to tear apart the Glaives and then from there it's just a matter of, well, just getting past the center defenses. That's basically it. The way this map is structured, this center is not as important as Lowry seems to think, but it is still fairly important. It is still the most direct path, but it's not the only path. However, these felons are not in position of each other. They are not close enough to each other that's going to make a difference. The thugs coming in just in time to finish... I was supposed to say the glaives are going to tear apart the felons due to the lack of shields, but the thugs come in just in time to save them, and they're going to continue down south. Glaive's going to try to flank around them, going to try to avoid the felons, and another felon in the north, which will be a thorn in their side if they go near it, but they won't. That felon... No, they are! Feldos is pulling back, he should... He could move back just one of the felons. This felon, maybe a second felon. The rest of them could go south. Just strike while the iron is hot here. Crab is being built up. There was a spider factory I didn't point out earlier, but crabs are being built as well. That's not the biggest counter, but it is going to be a major drain in the shields of the felons. The thugs are going to be quite effective, but the felons are just going to lose a lot of shields for basically nothing. Chasing after these glaives, what he needs to do is just... Either set up a couple turrets, or just place a felon here for defense, or place a felon in his main base for defense. Either way, moving his entire army back like this is no good. This is massive waste. He's giving Lowry all the map. He's giving Lowry this entire side of the map when he could have taken it for himself. That is... <sighs> that is just not going to work out for him, unfortunately. I mean, he is pushing a lot of bandits. He is, does have a decent army size. It's just still not doing a whole lot of favors. I gotta, I gotta reduce the font size on this. Let's see what the heck's going on. Okay, there we go. So yeah, eleven thousand metal for each in army. Both players are still quite even. This is very impressive. But crab in place. Thugs are not taking too much damage from it, but the splash damage is still being problematic for them. However, the thugs getting into range. The crab is. The thing is, the crab is sitting down. Crab sitting down. Have twelve thousand health in effect. These thugs should be able to deal a fair amount of damage, but they're going to... The thing is, the crabs are going to tank all the felon fire. And after that point, there's going to be no shield energy left for anything else. And there it goes. All the shield energy has gone down. The felon just draining all the thugs nearby. And that crab has not been forced to move. Does go down, but at the cost of all the felons. And the stiletto finishing them off. Unfortunately, disabling most of its own glaives as well. But enough... Well, a couple glaives are still in place. They are still going to deal with the felons. No, not enough. Never mind. There are not enough. Warriors, however, are going to be able to help, but even then, enough felons are in power. That's not going to be a problem. More thugs are needed, though, and more thugs are forthcoming. And a bunch of a felon thug ball going to the center of the map while also flanking from the north. This is what I was talking about that Felthos needed to do about, I'd say, four minutes ago. At this point, it's a tough situation. That crab really drained his felons, really drained his thug numbers. So overall drained his shields, and this is not going to work out too well, unless Felthos is able to just... Well, if we can clean this up, losing a lot of bandits for nothing to the Stardust, the thugs and the felons coming in, both sides coming in simultaneously, this... Has, he has to be careful though here, Stiletto goes down, but not before it gets rid of most of the shield ball, and the rest of the felons do not have enough shield energy to deal with this, thankfully for them... The Glaives cannot easily get through the Outlaw, and the rest of the Felon Ball just cuts through this, or will be able to cut through this fairly well. So the center of the map, completely open. Nice use of the Aryans here too. The Avengers, I'm not sure if they're open just to distract the Razors, keep them from being well defended, or what. They might just be there to deal damage overall. However, they are keeping the Razors from being in their defensive state. Belthos continuing to push out more Felons, more Thugs, retreating. Wise move here. You should get out of there. He's dealt a lot of damage. Does not want to lose anything more than he has to. Gotten rid of a lot of these defenses. A lot of the power plants. Needs to regroup. Needs to get his shield ball back in one piece. 
and then push forward once again. That's exactly what he's doing. Getting his shield ball is all connected. He pushes forward from here. He's got to worry about these sharpshooters. That's the one thing. They're cloaked, and they're going to deal a lot of damage to those felons. Actually, to anything, really. However, the shield ball is... Shield ball is strong here. Felthos should be able to move forward from here. I think Felthos is not... He's not aware of this. He has no radar coverage of what's going on in Lowry's base right now. Or Lowry's side of the map. Lowry, however, is aware of what's going on on this side... On Felthos' side of the valley. And he's fully aware of the army incoming. Sharpshooters have moved back. And... They are gonna be problematic. Warriors not so much. The Warriors are just gonna go down to the thugs and felons without too much issue, but... There are quite a few of them actually. No, they are being a thorn in the side. Felthos is losing several thugs to the Warriors before they go down. They do ultimately go down, but... This is still bad. The felon out of position, away from the shield ball. This should not happen. This really should not happen. That... That felon needs to go right now. It needs to be with its shield ball. Getting reconnected with it, and... In time, too, because remember, felons do drain shield energy. However, that's not enough. The sharpshooter cuts through the shields, kills that felon, and Felthos loses more and more of his ball. He's trying to build more of it, but it's just... That felon getting out of position really, really ruined it. The attack was going so well, but that's not going to work out. And the thing is, felons, it should be noted, are really more riots. They kind of have a skirmisher to them, skirmisher aspect to them, but they are really riots when it comes to dealing with large single targets felons just lose their shields and that's it they're not that you they're not the unit of choice for dealing with that for dealing with targets of warrior size or lower yeah they're great but for dealing with razors for especially the razors if they're defensed up they're clamped up like this sorry clammed up like this that's not going to work out and with all these sharpshooters in play as well it's just Belthos has no way of detecting these no i mean the bandits aren't nearby and the warriors are there that would take care of them anyway this is a very good mix of units by Lowry. And the crab is just there to deal raw damage, basically. See, I get the impression that Felthos is aware of the nature of line move, but doesn't hasn't gotten comfortable with using it to produce like a bunch of lines or using it to produce a circle. Oh, I guess it's more spiral. Using it to produce a circle or otherwise using it using it to produce tighter formations that make shield balls work well. Because at this point, his biggest weakness has been. The fact that the shields have not been together. The fact that the shield balls have been disconnected in any way. As you can see right now, he is going for a line, but the line does not account for the felons and thugs as a unit. The bandits really are independent. Bandits and vandals and rogues are independent of the felons and thugs. Because the felons and thugs need to support each other's shields. The bandits, felons, bandits, vandals, and rogues. Bandits, vandals, and rogues can just. They can go off on their own. They're independent of these guys. They don't have shields. They don't, they don't care about the shield ball. These crabs are just pushing in far, farther and farther and harder and harder. And Felthos has taken more to the center. He's, at this point, 100 metal. 100 some odd metal. Partly from Reclaim, but really, just look at the amount of map he's taken so far. He's got the vast majority of the map under his control. Oops. Well, all the red is his, but yeah. He has got basically all the map under his control. And Felthos only has about 9 or so... 10 or so metal extractors. Lowry has easily got 20. This is not working out well for Failthos, unfortunately, economically. And as a result, militarily, Lowry has a 2 to 1 advantage militarily and has the perfect unit mix to deal with the Felon Ball. And Failthos doesn't seem to quite have an idea of the best way of controlling a Felon Ball like this. I think Lowry is going to finish this pretty soon. He is pushing in, he's going to go for the kill. He doesn't have radar coverage of this ball, but he has radar coverage of most everything else. Felthos, he sees this incoming, he knows what's happening, but he can't do much about it, and... Lauri is... Sorry, Lauri has 41 metal. 96 energy, that's what he has. Massive power advantage. But still, 50 metal against 36. That is a big deal, and given that Felthos... Actually, Felthos is not running out of energy. He ha he's got his shields, but he's not running out of energy, so it's not the biggest deal. However, these snipers are... They are the biggest deal. And... There's just nothing here to deal with them. Nothing easily. Like I said, the warrior sniper mix... Prevents the bandits... Because the bandits are easily, easily... Easily the thing to reveal this. Maybe roaches as well. Setting up some roaches would allow them a bit of leeway, actually. Yeah, because that, that would reveal the sharpshooters. And then you just blow the roaches as soon as the sharpshooters are revealed. And they die. And it's, it's cost-effective. Even one sharpshooter would be cost-effective. 
And, yeah, Lowry still, he is reclaiming a ton of the map right now. There's all these battles, everything has gone on effectively in Lowry's territory, and it's showing. Lowry has, from there, a massive economic advantage. He's pushing Feldas back. Feldas is consolidating a losing position right now. Lowry is just pushing more and more forward. Gonna get rid of this radar, too. Gonna blind Feldas slightly. Not entirely, though. Feldas still knows what's going on. He still sees everything incoming. And now he's gonna go in for the, the attack. Unfortunately, these bandits are gonna die to the warriors before the sharpshooters get revealed by them. Some of the bandits are getting in place to reveal the sharpshooters. One of them is actually revealed, but... The bandits, that's their job. They have to reveal the sharpshooters. The thugs and felons need to stay close and get rid of the... The felons need to get rid of the warriors. The thugs need to just tank, basically. But unfortunately, that's not working out, and the felons getting separated from each other. Dante is well in place. How did I miss that? Felthaw is going for a Strider Hub, getting a Dante, but that gets disarmed, which actually would have made a pretty big difference, but unfortunately gets disarmed, and this, the Sharpshooters are going to finish that off. Ultimately doing nothing. And the Sharpshooters and the Crabs, two seconds to prove itself, and no chance of that. Sharpshooters finish that off, and... I don't even know if... No, okay. Feldhaus' commander is still alive, but it can't do much here. And Feldhaus, I think, is just going to throw in the towel. I think he's... I don't see a GG yet, but we're going to see it fairly soon. Feldhaus has lost his entire army. There's an eight-fold difference in cost between Lowry's army and Feldhaus' army. And Feldhaus... He's got nothing to deal with this right now. He's not even building anything. I think... I think he realizes he's lost. He may be in shock a bit. Especially since he did have the Dante. He would have assumed that Dante... Would have dealt the damage it needed to deal, but that's not going to happen. And that, that's GG. There we go. The so game has been called. Failed us. Valiant effort. But just didn't quite flank at the right times. Didn't quite know where to go. And ultimately, I mean, he had the right idea. It was just timing was really the biggest thing. That seemed to be the biggest weakness he had. But that is game, and an interesting game it was. So... I'll be back in just a couple minutes, so stay tuned.